Hello, Gary Stearman. Time for another Prophecy in the News Daily Update. Today is the 4th of June, and I'm making this uh, update for release on the 5th of June, and that should be when you're uh, watching it. We, we're going to talk today uh, uh, about the Muslim Brotherhood and another news item that may change the stakes in a very radical way. We have here from Israel Today magazine, date line June 4th, as Egyptians wait to vote in the second round of their first truly democratic presidential election, secular candidate Ahmed Shafiq is loudly warning voters that choosing his Muslim Brotherhood rival will plunge Egypt into darkness and spark renewed conflict with Israel. And so now, after the first round of Egyptian elections, we have some, some very interesting counterpoints developing. This is from Israel Today magazine, and it is a warning, basically to Israel, that the Muslim Brotherhood must not be allowed to control Egypt. Uh, and uh, paragraph two of this report says the Muslim Brotherhood already controls the Egyptian parliament, thanks to a very strong showing in legislative elections last December and January. In last week's presidential election, uh, Muslim Brotherhood Mohammed Morsi uh, took home the lion's share of the votes with 25%. But that wasn't enough for an outright victory. So as a runoff, uh, there's going to be a contest between Morsi and Ahmed Shafiq, who received 24% of the votes. Uh, it was basically a horse race. But here's the interesting thing. In a press conference last Sunday, Ahmed Shafiq cautioned that giving the Brotherhood both the Parliament and the Presidency will, quote, return Egypt to the Dark Ages. Shafiq insisted that despite his promises to the contrary, the Muslim Brotherhood will op oppress Egyptian Christians. By the way, they're already doing that. They will try to impose Sharia law, and they will antagonize Israel by making quote-unquote, Palestine, the central issue in Egyptian politics. Shafiq also said the Muslim Brotherhood would ignore the mounting lawlessness in the Sinai Peninsula, a situation that concerns Israel greatly, uh, as regional terror groups like Hezbollah, Hamas, and Al-Qaeda have already set up bases there. So the complexion of things is really changing in Egypt since round one. Uh, of the elections. Uh, Shafiq said, quote, I represent progress and light. They represent backwardness and darkness. This is Ahmed Shafiq running against the Muslim uh, Brotherhood candidate, Mohammed Morsi. Uh, it'll be interesting to see which way this election goes, so be watching it carefully. Israel's peace is in the balance. Now, at the very same time this is going on, a new oil discovery has been reported in Israel. You may recall that there are huge offshore uh, oil pools being discovered, you know, right off of the uh, of the coast of Israel, and uh, a new one has been discovered, uh, and it is being uh, uh, publicized now by the Israel Opportunity Energy Resources Group. Uh, its license that is the area of its license, and its discovery is estimated to contain 6.7 trillion, trillion with a T, cubic feet of natural gas and 1.4 billion barrels of oil. No doubt the Saudis have taken notice of this because this kind of, uh, of supply from a single field is, is monumental in the politics of the region. <clears throat> the quantity of uh, gas discovered in these licensed areas and the high probabilities make it the third largest offshore discovery to date. Company chairman Ronnie Hallman told the business newspaper Globes, adding, this quantity guarantees Israel's energy future for decades and makes it possible to export Israeli gas and to boost the state's revenues without worrying about gas reserves for domestic consumption. And so right as the political climate of, of the Middle East is heating up, uh, guess what? We're adding another factor to the mix. 
And don't you think that uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and uh, various Arab resources countries won't try to go after these new oil finds? <clears throat> the discoverer of these, uh, of these fields uh, comes about a year after another Israeli company made public its natural gas find in the Tamar and, and Leviathan fields. And you remember we talked about those. I'm sure you, if you've been watching these updates, you recall that uh, we spent a lot of time talking about Israel's newfound oil and gas supplies last year <coughs> off the Mediterranean coast. Tamar and Leviathan are estimated to contain 9 and 17 trillion cubic feet of natural gas, respectively. So Israel could become the major source of natural gas in the world. Uh, and of course, Israel is under siege by, by enemies all around who would just love to have those resources. Believe me, this raises the stakes on the, uh, the battle that's currently being waged against Israel. Tamar and Leviathan, together with the nearby Gabriela uh, finding area, the license area held by Modain Energy, are also expected to yield a combined 800 million barrels of oil. Don't think the Saudis aren't watching this a and the rest of the world. By the way, have you noticed that we're making new finds in the United States at, at an extremely rapid uh, pace and new ways of getting oil out of the ground are being developed by engineers. So what we've discovered is not oil starvation in the world today, but perhaps we're moving toward an oil glut. And what that'll do to the global economy, uh, we're, we're watching that one very carefully. <clears throat> now, the Bible seems to say something about these oil discoveries. Uh, and by the way, it is the territory, the ancient territory of Asher, which is spoken of in the Bible, that lies very close by these oil discoveries. <clears throat> and let me read uh, the, the prophecy concerning Asher. Uh, and and it's, fa it's fascinating to read this. Genesis 49, 20, Out of Asher his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Well, that word fat, shemain, is the, is the uh, Hebrew word for oil. And so Asher, off of the coast of Asher, has been discovered all this oil and gas. Asher is prophesied in the Bible as being fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Well, if you go over to Deuteronomy uh, 33 and the prophecies to the tribes and read about what uh, the Bible says about Asher in Deuteronomy 33, it echoes that prophecy we just read, Deuteronomy 33, 24, and of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children, let him be acceptable to his brethren, and let him dip his foot in oil. Wow, isn't that interesting? Let him dip his foot in oil. And the next sentence is, thy shoes shall be iron and brass, and as thy days, so shall thy strength be. Now, a lot of people have said, and I don't frown at this at all, this prophecy concerning Asher could very well be a prophecy that the territory of Asher in the latter days will be the source of Israeli oil, a including thy shoes shall be iron and brass. A lot of people have said, you know, the tools used to, uh, to drill for oil are fashioned of iron and brass, that is, of a number of different metallic alloys. And, and so uh, Asher uh, dipping his foot in oil with shoes of iron and brass, wow, that's a prophecy of, of a great oil discovery in the latter days. And I think uh, as the article from is Israel Today shows, uh, that's happening right now. New finds, huge discoveries in oil and natural gas, not just off the coast of Israel, but off the coast of Asher in northern Israel, the territory just south of Haifa, Israel. Fascinating. Interesting things are happening. Certainly we're living in the last days and prophecy is being fulfilled. And for that reason, we always remind you, Gary Stearman.
keep looking up. <laughs>